Hello, and welcome back to the Expos Down Road to Glory series, where in the last episode we crashed out of the cup against Taunton Town FC of Division 3. And after that, our form took a bit of a battering. In this episode, playing in 7th place Gorgie Thistle, but we aren't in the best of condition to do so. So, let's see how the two squads compare against each other, because Gorgie Thistle are a team we've faced many times before, and we need to be able to win today at home in order to stay top of the league. And even then, that might not be enough because P4HFC might end up outscoring us and reclaim top spots. Very tight balance here. As mentioned in pre-season, Gorley Thistle had sold Frankie McRonald, so they only have four main midfielders. However, they have been using Sean Terry and Scott Rosserston in a five-man midfield, so don't rule out the possibility of them still playing five in midfield. However, they do have one significant injury come out for this game, and that is defender Ali Rich. The 26-12 defender is their best defender, I'd say, at the moment, and he is going to be a huge miss for them in this match today. Compare that to our squad, and we have some good news to report on the injury front. Ant Connolly has now fully recovered from injury. Not only that, but Aquila Santa Maria is also available to start the game, although he is still slightly injured. Nevertheless, it's a risk I'm willing to take to try and fend off Gorky's potential upsets. They aren't particularly good away from home, Gorky, but they're still a dangerous team and not to be underestimated despite their low, low league position because I believe a lot of the sides in this division are rather evenly matched. There is no one weak link like there was last time. But wait, in a huge twist of fate, it appears Gorky Fizzler have forgotten to set tactics. Now this is a turn up for the books really, as Ant Connolly and Goal for us were back for Pim van der Kreese, Ledley King, Aquila Santa Maria and Devon Riley. Midfielder Ray Sarah Etta, Timothy Wagner, Alvito Roma, YG Nur, and Raymond Hargreaves, and a front low man of Salsa Motor. You'll notice that Gorgie's lineup doesn't look quite right, and that's because they haven't really set one at all. Their lineup is Lawrence McIver in goal, the back three of Octavian Pamphil, Jeff Newell, and striker Lennox Goram. Midfielder Roy McCoy, Quentin Kandal, Jorgen Bjornland, Fraser Inkster, and striker Kieran Barron, their usual front two in midfield and defence. A front two defender Dionysus Kiparisis and midfielder Scott Russellston, although both were all rounders. Still, both you thought, thought could have gone in their usual places, but the lack of tactics certainly won't help Gorgi Vessel at all. Let's go live to the Supermass Black Hole for the match. The captains for this match are Leather King for Knights of Sidonia and Jorgen Bjornland for Gorgi Vessel. The referee is Ian Hartman, skill 4, harshness 4. Knights are in the red and yellow strip playing from left to right, Gorgi in the blue and white strip playing from right to the left, their change strip due to a colour crash. Babazo against P4HFC is one of the other matches in the division, while BOR Bears away to Hearts, who were in their division last year. Frederick Stad and Real Real Madrid complete the fixture list for this round. And we're underway! And perhaps unsurprisingly, Knights have the first chance of the game given Gorgie's lack of tactics for this match as P4HFC have taken the lead against um, they've taken the lead against Barbaza so P4HFC are now top as Timothy Wagner's free kick is pulled and pounded away by Lawrence McIver in the Gorgie Fissel goal. Frederick Stad have just taken the lead against Real Air Madrid so that's a big goal for them um, and Barbaza have equalised. Timothy Wagner saved by McIver so Barbaza have equalised against P4HFC but they are still top as things stand. Gorgie Fissel are climbing out of the relegation zone as things stand but people actually have gone back ahead and Sasa Mota has scored! That's the only scored against Gorgi Fissel to give them the lead against the side and as things stand, Nice and Sardinia are still in second place it's that tight at the moment We've, we're the leading but we're going to drop a place go a free kick though Timothy Wagner! It's the crossbar Timothy Wagner's had plenty of chances to score so far but he has failed to take any of them We have a bit of a low and goal action recently apart from our side Raymond Hargreaves! How of the goal? Raymond Hargreaves fails to make his chance count and it's still 1-0 tonight. But Gorgi Fissel have completely been dominated off the park here as Hearts have got ahead against BOR Bears and the goals actions are exploding between Barry Bass and P4HFC as P4HFC now they're 3-2. What a game that is! At half time, that's completely dominated the game with 6 chances compared to Gorgi 0 and they've also dominated possession but they only lead 1-0. There's currently 1 1 between Frederick Sound and Real El Madrid, and Hearts lead 1 0. P4HFC are leading. So, although we drop a place, we gain on BOR Bears. So, that could only be good news. Second half is about to get underway now. Maybe more of the same. 
You would think without Gorgi having any tactics whatsoever, this would probably be a walk in the park, but we're only one nil up so far. Free kick though. Timothy Wagner! Just wide. Timothy Wagner's not going to score against McKinnon, but it's things. If we have Miramontes this season, then we might be more threatening in front of goal. But as things stand, P4 HFC are leading the division. As we allow Madrid to go ahead against Frederickstad, why do you know tries to pit the ball the keeper's legs? And he scores! Why do you know it makes it 2-0 to Nice Sardinia? And as things stand, that will put us back top of the league again on goal difference. What a tight league this is turning out to be. 75 minutes played and there's 2-0 to Knights. With a penalty! Penalty in the 76th minute for Knights here. 3-0, 3-1 Real Madrid. Him by decrease to the penalty! Scores! 3-0, game set and match. It is still quite tight between Barbaz and P4HFC, but we've got a bit of a breathing space now as we are now outright top of the league on goal difference, but we'll give a chance to Scott Brasenson! and tapped over by Ant Connolly. They had to be alert there. Gorgie nearly stuck in with a surprise one back. Got a headed by Wajuna. Pushed away by McKibber. Well, Gorgie are trying, even if they don't have any direction whatsoever. We've got a free kick. And there's a chance here for Timothy Wagner. Push the crossbar. As we come towards the end of this match, Knights are leading pretty comfortably here, and we're staying top of this division. Break away for Knights. Race to start Etta. Nowhere near the goal. Well, all those form worries about how he might struggle. And in the end, it's still turned to be a very comfortable victory thanks to an unexpected turn of events. And hearts are tuned up against BOR Bears as the match is over. Great win for Knights. We are having a very good season, actually. We haven't conceded a, ma a goal since we faced BOR Bears. This is a very good season so far. And this just might be our chance to get into Division 4. We need to keep this form up for the rest of the season though there's still a long way to go until we get anywhere and we aren't particularly clear of P4HFC but we've got a good chance of promotion. Alvito Roma was the man of the match for Nice Sidonia and Fraser Inkster was the man of the match for Gorgie Fistel. Well that was an unexpected bonus we managed to beat an opponent who we were expected to go as a hard game but in the end it was quite a walk in the park really an unexpected walk in the park. We cannot let our guard down over them over the return fixture though. That'll be a tough ask. But even so, it's nice to be able to get the points on the board and stay in the lead of the league. We've had a great season so far. Despite losing the opening game against our newest rivals, P4HFC, we've clawed it back and won every league game since and now we sit top of the league on goal difference. But still, we're still level on points with P4HFC and we need them to drop points as well as BOR Bears to also drop points, like they did today by losing to Hearts. We're six rounds in now, and the Ultimate League season is starting to take shape. The battles for the top and the bottom are being abundantly clear. We are in a three-way fight between P4HFC and BOR Bears. Team of the week is Marcelino Rivera in goal for BOR Bears again. Back four, Rodrigo Leonardo, P4HFC, Pimad de Priest, Knights of Sidonia, Zainal Effendi, Frederick Stad, and Dudley King, Knights of Sidonia. Midfield Gerard Maybon, P4HFC, Guillermo Olivia, Hearts, Hugh Warren, P4HFC, and Alvito Roma, Knights of Saloon. He actually captains the side. David David, Real El Madrid, and Eusebio Sierra, P4HFC, are the two up front. Phil Meyer, Real El Madrid, got manager of the round for his away win over Frederickstad, and a good away win it was too. So, after six rounds, Knights are top of the league on goal difference this time, not just goal scored, goal difference. We actually have some saw a breathing space of P4HFC. We are also six points ahead of BOR Bears, so it's looking very good for promotion. Real Al Madrid and Hearts have jumped under the relegation zone. Bad Bazzo and Frederick Stad in it, and Gorgie Fistle drops the bottom. Anyway, it's the start of the double headers in the next episode, where we'll be playing Frederick Stad, the only team we've yet to face so far in the league. We're the first of the back to back games, and we have the first leg at home. Hopefully, we can get a good result there. So, see you guys next time.